one of your areas of expertise is sustainable manufacturing. So where does remanufacturing fit into this idea, this overall idea of sustainable manufacturing? Well, uh, Adam, remanufacturing is, is a key part of sustainable manufacturing and indeed the move towards a more circular economy in general in, in the use of our materials and our technical products. Uh, so we can achieve the UK government and indeed the world's targets for things like net zero. To do, to do that, we have to start to dematerialise. We won't achieve the target of net zero by just cutting CO2 from our manufacturing and our transport. Uh, we have to use less stuff. Remanufacturing is key and, and a, a really, really strong method of extending the useful life of our products and thus the materials in our products so that we don't actually have to use as much stuff. I wonder how the science even works to calculate what is sustainable manufacturing. As you say, that there is no one factor that can really be used to to measure sustainable manufacturing. And we have to follow the mantra of sort of make the same with less. Uh, so the, the direction of resource efficiency is key. Um, we must use fewer materials, less energy, less, less water. And, and if we aim to use less of all these things, it, it's a good first step. And we can measure that. We can measure whether we've used less of all these things in our end products. But, but commercially, we, we have a challenge. You know, challenge because current economic models all focus on reducing cost and targeting reducing prices. This has meant that as a society, we don't really value the materials and all the stuff we have. And therefore, we're less likely to be careful when we get to the end of life or the perceived end of the useful life of those products. So what has changed in the last 10 years or so in the drive to deliver more sustainable outcomes in production that, that you have seen? Well, I've seen a lot more companies becoming aware of things like waste, uh, water usage and energy. Zero waste to landfill, for example, uh, is, is, is a very, very strong driver at the moment. And, you know, we've seen the impact that uh, somebody like David Attenborough has had by saying, you know, we've got to get rid of waste. Um, uh, but I think that is actually largely in, in manufacturing driven by legislation which has raised the cost. So it, it's high on most manufacturing companies' targets because if you reduce the waste to landfill, you don't have to pay as much out. But, you know, there are still far too many companies who believe that recycling in-house scrap and or waste uh, is actually a good thing to do. They think because they've, they've kept it in-house, it hasn't gone to landfill, they're still going to recycle it. Um, you know, it's better than sending it to landfill, I agree, but actually they should be focusing on reducing in-house recycling um, and, and really making sure that they, they use their raw materials coming in much more effectively in the first place. And when you look forward to a vision of, I don't know, 2030 or 2040 and beyond, what does that vision of sustainable manufacturing look like to you if we get it right? In a blue sky situation, I hope we will have moved forward, not just uh, as a manufacturing se uh, sector, but as a society, we have to value the materials we have in our products. You know, by 2050, we have to have cut our use of materials, and that's by 50%. That's if we get it right. What's your vision? What happens if we get it wrong? Did you see the wildfires in Canada? Did you see the wildfires in Greece and Italy? I mean, wasn't that horrendous that, you know, the record temperatures being produced almost 50 degrees on in, in places there you never you would never have expected. The floods in Germany, the, the inundation in the New York subway and even in London Underground at the moment happen less frequently. But, you know, the worst case scenario, these will become a normality and, 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 and the Earth's population eventually will be squeezed in much, much smaller space. Um, the area of habitable earth will become smaller. And, you know, who knows? We might have wars over water. The news is filled with, you know, headlines around the climate emergency. We bandy that word around a lot now. Do you feel as if it is being treated by the world as a proper emergency? No, I really don't. I, I don't think it's being treated seriously by a lot of politicians as an emergency. Uh, 
maybe after top, COP26 there could be a change. I, I don't know, but I really, I really am quite pessimistic. Why are fossil fuel companies still getting tax benefits? Why are fossil fuel companies still being allowed to, to challenge governments who, who stop their building of new, new oil exploration plants? In, in, even in Europe this is happening. Um, and, and I think this is dreadful. We, we've somehow uh, got to change this, this, uh, th this economy based on fossil fuels and, 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 and people will believe that the politicians recognise as a crisis. I think the public's changed more than the politicians have in, in answer to that. Of course, we have this global massive event, COP26, coming up when the world's powers come together and at least talk the right talk if they don't walk the right walk. But do you believe that event, for instance, could bring meaningful change? Well, if they focus on the right things, Adam, they have to be focused on action afterwards. But I do feel that COP26, to a certain extent, focuses too much on energy and hasn't really tackled the challenge of materials and, and the relationship between energy and materials. We have to get this message across of dematerialisation. And if we don't do that, then, then it will never be a success. We won't hit those targets. So what, in your view, is the importance of companies like Circular Computing delivering a sort of pre-used product as new to market, what difference, what kind of difference does that make? Well, as a major supermarket chain says, every little helps, and, uh, and it really does. Um, and I would say that circular computing are doing a bit more than every little. I think they're doing a fantastic job. It, you know, it's both our individual and our corporate responsibility to, to do what we can, and we have to encourage uh, the development of other companies like circular computing in other sectors. Professor Mark Jolly, Director of Manufacturing at Cranfield University. Fascinating discussion. Thank you very much.